So if I was to title my sermon this morning, it'd be called Abiding in Jesus, Staying in Jesus. And last, last Sunday, I talked about planting good and bad seeds and what those seeds do in your life and what they can do in the lives of others and how appropriate. Um, a couple weeks ago, one of my friends had posted something on Facebook uh, about another prominent Christian falling away. And, and time and time again, we see this Christian falling away, this musician falling away. And I had a conversation with a young lady at work uh, a couple days ago. And she said, oh, man, I was hanging out with a good friend of mine, and uh, he turned his back on Christ. And, and you see all these different people that seem like you know, they're, they're turning away from God. And the question is, why? And I wrote on my Facebook page, uh, Facebook page, my heart is grief. I'm constantly reminding others, never look to the man or woman, but keep your eyes on Jesus and your heart and your mind in God's word. <clears throat> and, I, and, I, and I think about that, and it's so often others, like I shared last Sunday, your influence, whether big or large, uh, makes a difference because people begin to follow the individual and not follow Christ. And to me, that was so important, and that's why I always say, I tell others, you know, you know, if some great evangelist or some preacher turns away, it really wrecks some people in their faith. And, and I'm like, man, that's so sad to me because the key issue should be you following Christ, not the individual. You can learn and be mentored by people and be inspired by people because I am. I always share this. Billy Graham has always been an inspiration to me about him being so bold for Jesus and sharing his faith. He's talked to politicians, leaders, people on the street, the common person, uh, the, the princes, uh, the, the wise people, the, the lowly people that people think are lowly anyways. And he has been an inspiration. But the foundation of it all for me is that I always want to follow God. I always want to look to Jesus and not to man. And that's why I'm always telling, especially young people, it's so easy to see this cool individual, the, the pop Christian, uh, and follow them instead of God. And so when they turn their back and go, maybe it's not, maybe God isn't real, or maybe this isn't real. And I, and I said, no, that's why you don't follow the individual. You follow Jesus. In this verse, uh, in Jeremiah 17, 9, the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond here. Who can understand it? So when we go with our emotions, the Bible is telling us our heart is already deceitful. We're, we're, it's easily swayed. It's, it, it's built on emotions and not built on a foundation of who God is in our life and in the lives of others. I feel like we do this great injustice when we say, if you come to Jesus, your life will be easy and smooth and everything is fine. And I think this is, was a teaching, at least when I was growing up, and and even as a young Christian, I believe this too. I believe, oh, everything is so nice and good. And the reality is when you become a true follower, a true believer in Christ, it's nothing but hard because of all kinds of persecution. It's easy. Like if you have this universal idea of Christianity and faith, yeah, everyone is okay. Everything is okay. Be who you are, and that's all right is the opposite of what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches to live a holy and pure life. And when you start preaching truth, and I always say truth and love, then you're going to receive persecution because people are going to say, oh, you don't accept me for who I am. You, you, don't, you don't really love me. The very fact that I share the truth for you is the fact that I love you so much. And so we as believers, for walking with uh, Jesus and we're, we're living the life that Christ says. Guys, God said it, it wouldn't be easy. He said it would be persecuted for my namesake. You know, and I saw this video that went viral on YouTube. Uh, maybe it was a couple months ago of another prominent uh, person. It was off of uh, one of these news websites, and she was part of this huge mega church, and everything was going well. And her and husband. Uh, you know, we're, we're worship leaders of some sort, and um, they were praying, and, and things started to begin to fall apart, and they were teaching.
teaching this this idea that you know if you're really walking with God, everything is going to be smooth and easy. And that they had lost their child, and um, and uh, it was a bad pregnancy. And they thought, oh, what did we do wrong? Um, uh, we're not really living uh, uh, the way God wants us to. And, and it's such a danger to teach this. This is. This is not a teaching that's from God that your life is perfect and everything is smooth. I mean, the, like I said, the Bible teaches something totally different. We've turned Jesus into some kind of uh, cosmic Santa Claus, some kind of genie, gimme, 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 you know. Um, we've turned him into this, this uh, thing who he, who he isn't. It's, a, it's about a one-way rela relationship. Like he's some kind of like a genie, you know, and, and, and don't get me wrong, um, I, we should go to God with all kind of prayers and requests, but I think the issue is, if we're always trying to get something out of it, we've missed the point. We missed the point that it's about a relationship with God, a relationship with Jesus, and that's what we miss. And I, I think, um, like, like our, our, our own, my own children, uh, they come to me, you know, and they're like, Daddy, Daddy, what did you bring home? I go, oh, nice to see you too. Uh, what kind of toy is there? I go, oh, okay, how about hello, Daddy, how are you? And I think sometimes, and I've been guilty of this too, you know, that I go, God, God, do this for me, do this for me, do this for me, do this for me. And when it's about just like being in his presence, you know, uh, being with God. And I think that's what we miss sometimes because I'm guilty of it too. And like I said, don't get me wrong. I, I think that we should go to God with our request. Hey, I need this or I need help here. I'm praying for this issue or that issue. But it's about having that relationship with Jesus, having that intimacy with God. In Ephesians 6, 18 and pray on the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayer requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Isn't it interesting? God tells us, hey, let, let's pray on all occasions with all kinds of prayer requests. And, uh, but, but what is it so interesting about this? It goes back to others. And it goes back to keeping the Lord's people in your prayers, thinking about others. And I thought that's so profound. You know, um, I heard once someone like, hey, start praying for others instead of yourself about whatever request it may be. You know, like, hey, I, I, I'm praying for uh, Uncle Bill to get saved. Well, well, why don't you pray for Uncle Sam to get saved, your friend Uncle Sam to get saved too, and, and start uh, planting those seeds of uh, prayer in other people's lives as well. And like I said, my kids, when my kids come to me, and, and, and right now it's my daughter, right? Me, but I got my little daughter. You know, sometimes I, I'll walk into the door, and my boys are just watching cartoons like this. I'm like, oh, hello, good to see you guys. But my daughter, she comes running to me, right? And she runs and goes, da, da. <laughs> you know, and she wants me to pick her up, and she, her way of kissing me is putting her forehead on my head, you know, and. And, or the big open mouth kiss, you know, and it's just, and it, and it takes my heart to a whole different level than when, instead of my boys going, oh, dude, I, like, and it brings so much joy, and, and God says that he is our heavenly father, and how much joy is it that, that we run to father, father God, and just say, Lord, I love you so much, thank you for what you've done in my life, I trust you, and I love you, not just this constant, uh, you know, banging, Lord, just give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. And like I said, I don't want people to misunderstand me, especially people on, on the internet saying, well, then you can't pray for anything. No, of course not. God says, come to me constantly. But I want, I want people to understand it's about that relationship with Jesus, that, that the constant coming to God as a father and building that relationship and building those deep roots and foundation in who Jesus is. And often we see God in that relationship, and it, and it reminds me of that picture of this, this little girl where God's communicating with God, and, he, and Jesus says, hey, give me, give me that, that thing, that teddy bear. And, and, and the, the little girl's like, oh, I don't know if I want to give this. 
and behind Jesus is even a bigger teddy bear, you know? And, uh, and it's that faith in God saying, hey, it, it, I'm going to trust you in that relationship. I'm going to give you this small thing that I think has value, which really isn't of value, and I have so much more to give to you. It's a perfect picture of God saying, give me the small stuff. Don't sweat the small stuff. I have so much more to give to you. I have so much more. It reminds me, like, when I was in college, uh, there was this girl that I thought, oh, this is, this is my wife. I'm going to marry her. Uh, you know, I'm in love with her. But I, I felt like God said, uh, she's not for you. This is not for you. And I, I remember I was so mad. I hit the, the shower stall. I go, God, you want me to give me anything nice, you know? And I go, ow, oh, that hurts, you know? And then I realized that God had something so much better for me down the road. And I got married, and I, I have a beautiful wife, you know, Marquetta, and I have these beautiful children, and I'm so grateful. She's so perfect for me. You know, and if I was disobedient, and, and, and if God, and I just pursued something that wasn't for me, then, you know, neither I would be blessed, or that young lady would not have been blessed either. And uh, what's so amazing is God has so much goodness in store for us. In our obedience. And so we go on to think that through all this Christianity, uh, what, what is it? Yeah? You know, um, on my Twitter feed, I love this. <clears throat> Sometimes life is hard. Then all of a sudden it gets tougher. When some people say that Christianity is a crutch, I say it's more like a stretcher getting you through the hard times. And I... Constantly, I hear, and that, that's what I mean. It's that you know we say that Christianity makes everything, you know, easy breezy. Everything is uh, easy going. It's just not the truth, and, and, we, and we do a disservice when we tell people that. When the hard times come, then it goes. I must be doing something wrong, and and, and people begin to fall away because I'm, I don't got the formula right, or it's not right. But what it is is, it's this. Christianity helps get you through the hard times. It's this, your faith in Christ will, even though bad situations happen and you lose someone or, or nothing seems to be going right, you don't have a job, you don't have uh, the finances you need, and, and you're struggling through life, Jesus is going to walk you through. It may not seem like it at the time, and you may be frustrated, and God understands that, but he's going to walk us through that path. And, and I get frustrated, too, and, and the things I pray for doesn't happen, and, and this doesn't happen, and, and I begin to lose faith, and, and, then, and then I realize that my focus is not on Jesus. It's on what Jesus can do for me, and that's not what it's about. It's not about what Jesus can do for you, you know? It's, a, it's about that relationship you have. It reminds me of a speech by JFK where he says, uh, <laughs> It's not, it's not about, you know, don't ask what you can do. Don't ask your country what it can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Yeah. And so it's like, Lord Jesus, I, I'm, I'm tired of asking, give me, give me, give me. Or what can I do for you? What, what do you want me to do, Lord? And it's not about a um, works uh, salvation. It's not about work, work, work. It's about, I love you so much, Jesus, that I want to give you my small teddy bear. Because what you have for me is so much greater anyways, Lord. What God has for us is so much greater anyways. And, and what, as I learn, and I've seen this, I've seen uh, things happen. You know, it's, it just, and I, I've missed the boat sometimes. I've been disobedient. And I, I've shared the story of where, um, where I, I've been doing street evangelism and I've met countless people. And in, in, in that obedience, you don't know what will happen. You don't know what hearts will be unlocked. You don't know what minds will be changed. And I'm thinking about the different times that I've, I've been disobedient. And I haven't trusted that relationship with Jesus of what might have happened or what could have happened. Uh, yeah, and, and it blows my mind that, that God still says, okay, I'm still going to choose to use you, walk with you. And, and be with you, Eric. Mm. Even in our ignorance, God is good. <laughs> Though becoming a Christian doesn't make life easy, it does give you a guiding post, a guiding light, a, a 
rod. You know, I think of the verse where God says, Though I walk through the shadow of thy dead, I shall fear no evil. For your rod and your staff, they are with me and they comfort me. And so the real question is, in this time, like I said, where my friends had posted uh, pictures um, of people falling away, or articles, I should say, of people falling away, why do people do that? You know, were they ever truly a believer to begin with? Do they lose their salvation? Do they give up their salvation? But let's see what Jesus says in Matthew 13 through 1. I'm going to read a bit of scripture today. I hope that's okay. It's going to be a little bit longer than I usually read. But I, I think it's definitely uh, worth looking at. That same day, Jesus went out to the house and sat by the lake. Such a large grab crowd gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it while all the people stood on the shore then he told them again many things a farmer went out to sow his seeds and he scattered the seeds some fell along the path and the birds came up and ate them some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil it sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow but the sun came up and the plants were scorched and withered because they had not rooted. Other seeds fell among thorns where they grew up, choked the plant. Still other seeds fell on good soil. There it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty, thirty times what it was sown. Who has ears, let him hear. I, I always imagine this scene like Jesus is, you know, in this little village and, or this town and the crowd gathers, they're excited to hear what he says, and it's so big. I mean, this blows my mind. It's so big that he had to get into a boat. <laughs> you know, there's so many people on the shore, and he had to get into a boat and sit in a boat and, and share this parable. And, um, and that's a side note, but I thought it was just, that was just cool. The disciples came to him and asked him, Why do you speak to these people in parables? He replied, The knowledge of the... <clears throat> Excuse me. Secrets of the kingdom of heaven have been given to you, but not to them. Whoever has will be given more, and he who has abundance. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. This is why I speak to them in parables. Those seeking, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. And this is the fulfillment of the prophets of Isaiah. Isn't that interesting? Today, I, I even posted before, like some people, their, their eyes are open, but they, they can't see anything. You know, they, they're just, they, you know, they hear, but they don't understand. And I think that's a perfect example of our society today that, that you can speak plain truth and people don't want to hear it or see it or believe it. And it's just shocking to me that people uh, ignore truth. It's so simple. I see it time and time again, you know. It's a one, two, three, A, B, C, and it's so simple, and yet people ignore it. I'm just so shocked. In the fulfillment of the prophecy, by the way. So, you will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will ever be seeing and never perceiving. For this, the people's hearts have become callous. <laughs> that's today, too. It's just, this right. We're, we see these words are so true today, and that's why the... The gospel is so important that we keep reading. And just it blows my mind, even as I'm reading this now, that I see the truth of the gospel. Uh, it's mind-blowing. If you can understand what's going on in my head right now, I'm, I'm just thinking of all these conversations I've had over the, the last couple of days, and it's just like, man, this is why we need to be in God's word. It's so true. I'm so sorry. I'm totally off. For the people, their hearts have become callous. They have... They have hardly hear with their ears, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might have seen with their eyes and heard with their ears, understanding with their hearts, and turn, and I would heal them. Blessed are your eyes, because they have seen, your ears, because they have heard. For I tell you the truth, many prophets and righteous men long to see what you have seen, but did not see it, and to hear what you have heard, but not hear it. Listen to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears this message about the kingdom of, and does not understand it, the evil one comes, snatches away what is sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The one who received the seed that fell upon the rocky places is the man who hears the word, at once receives it with joy. But since he has no root, 
it lasts only for a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the world, he quickly falls away. The one who receives a seed that fell along the thorns is the man who hears the word, but the words of life and the deceitfulness of the wealth choke him out, make it unfruitful. But the one who receives the seeds that fell along the good soil is the man who hears the word, understands it. He products a crop, yielding a hundred times, sixty, thirty times what was sown. Man, to me it's just like this. It's like we see the things that have been sown in people's lives, these people that said they have followed Christ, and it's, it's almost, and I'm not going to judge anyone's heart or say what, the, what they believed or whether they not believed, but just what the Word of God says is that, that, that there was no foundation. That's basically what it comes down to. There was no foundation in their life. I know that you've seen other people in your life and, you know, they, they have shaking situation, they get upset with God and they kind of drift away a little bit, but then they eventually come back because their foundation was deep. Their foundation was deep. Their roots were deep. And, I, and, I, and my conclusion is this, and I really believe this. Those that say they have followed Christ and, and were leaders and, and all of a sudden they, they turn away and say, yeah, I, um, I was wrong about these things. I don't believe in Jesus. I would say their, their roots and their foundation were, were never deep. It was all superficial because if it was real, the word of God says that they wouldn't have turned away. I, I say that there are those that, like I say, will drift for a season and will always come back. God will always bring them back. You'll be, some people are mad at God for a season and God brings them back. God can deal with it, yeah? yeah. God's going to be like, well, you were mad at me. You disrespected me. Goodbye. No, God, God doesn't do that because we, we constantly sin. I, I just saw a post today. Someone said, oh, I am without sin. I go, no, 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 because uh, First John says, he that says he uh, is without sinner is a liar and the truth is not in him. And so I'm thinking, I think God can deal with our sin as long as we are repentant. As long as like, Lord, oh God, I messed up, you know. I, I just saw, a, you know, also another news article where this guy goes, well, Jesus really wasn't perfect, you know. No one's really perfect. And I'm thinking, this, this famous news anchor, I'm thinking, yeah. If Jesus was, I know that I'm not perfect and I screw up. Uh, if Jesus wasn't perfect, we're in big trouble. Because if Jesus wasn't perfect, I was, some of these people blow my mind. <clears throat> yeah, and it, Jesus is perfect. Even Paul said, I am the chief of all sinners. And if Paul's the chief of all sinners, I'm probably right behind him, you know. But the grace and the blood of Jesus that covers me sets me free from my sins. And it's not an excuse to continue to walk in sin or live in sin, but it, it's, it, it's that grace. It's, it, it, it's, it's not about me. It's about Jesus. It's that grace that sets me free. Man, God's good. So, so what do we do? We see these people fall away, and, and you see your children, your friends. We have to constantly remind people to have those deep roots. And that, that, that deep root is the word of God. Yeah? We water it daily by reading God's word. We water and we walk with God by reading it. And someone like me, I have to confess, I've read God's word a lot. I, I've read the Bible through multiple, multiple times. I know a lot of God's word, but I'm definitely not perfect, right? And it's someone like me, it's easy to say, oh, I don't need to read the God's word. I already know it. It's in my head. But it's such a danger and a farce. That's like, Hey, my tomato plants are good and watered. I don't need to water them for the next three days. And we know one day tomato plants can die because you don't water them, right? Those are the you that are gardeners. And to me, the, the danger is that we be, begin to not read God's word, not water our soul and our spirit. And you can see a difference when, we're, we're, when someone's not reading God's word daily and feasting on God's word and and being filled with God's spirit through the reading of God's word, through prayer, through worship. <coughs> and uh, as Bible guys, we, we really have to consume God's word. Because if we don't, uh, we begin to uh, really miss out what God has for us. And, and, and I think with a lot of these people, 
and some of these people that I that that I grew up reading their books, and, and, I, and I don't want to give credit to these people, and that's why I haven't used their names. Um, and I'm thinking of one individual in particular uh, who I read his books, and, and it was encouraging to me. And and I'm like, man, where was the foundation? Because if you if you don't Man, if you have a love of Jesus, you're not going to turn away. That's my conclusion, is that I, I, I've been mad. I've been mad at God. I mean, let's be honest, right? We've all been mad at God. Or, and obviously that, that anger has been misplaced because God is holy. And everything he does, I believe he does for us because he loves us. We may not understand it. And sometimes it's just life, circumstances in life. Yeah, it's just what God, you know... But ultimately, God's goal is for the, the good of our soul. Yeah, you know, I don't want to just say, make it all about us. It, our salvation is about us. It, it, of course not, because we can't save ourselves. It's about Jesus. But ultimately, it, God does things because He loves us and He cares about us. And the verse that Jesus always says that hey, I don't call you servant anymore. I call you friend. Blows my mind. And I share that. Like God says. I no longer call you servant. I call you friend. The creator of the universe calling us friend. <laughs> I mean, think about that. The, the, the creator of the universe is on your side. He got friends. You know, you, you hear this, I got friends in high places or low places or whatever. <laughs> but then think about it. You got the, the creator of the universe calling you friend. Yeah, We don't always understand the circumstances. And that's why it's so important as we, we lead our children and, and new Christians into it to give a, a, a solid foundation of God's word, making sure their roots grow deep. It's not about gimme, 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 this cosmic Christianity that says that, you know, you can have whatever you want, uh, be whatever you want. Uh, it, it's a farce, and, it, and it, it, it's more destructive than it is good. And I think that's why people fall away. You know, the wind comes, temptations, all these different things come, and because they don't have a, a solid foundation in God's word, this is why people fall away. This is why people uh, have don't have a true relationship with Christ. Second Corinthians 9, 6. The point is this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows abundantly will also reap abundantly. And that's my thought, is that if we're so if we if we sow into what God has for us, if we sow into our spiritual lives with just a little bit of God's word, a little bit of his understanding, then we blow away. And that's why doctrine and God's word is so important to know, understand true, truly who God is. And I've been beginning into a lot of uh, debates a lot lately. Uh, having a YouTube channel is like being in the wild, wild west. You know? it's, it's like people come out after you for what you think is the basics of Christianity. Oh, this is basic. Everyone should understand this. And I'm shocked. But people are coming after me and really upset. You know, like I, I posted stuff about the Trinity. And uh, sure enough, a lot of people came after me. You know, and, and we're, I'm in the process of starting a, um, a podcast. And we're gonna, I'm going to start dealing with a lot of these issues. And it's going to go deeper. And, and I'll hopefully unlock people's hearts and change people's minds. Because I want to <laughs> build it on God's word. But I know it's going to be like the wild, wild west. And, um, but I, I want to pour into people's lives. And that's why I always tell other people, don't even look at me. You know, I was, when I was teaching in Germany, these, all these people, you know, like start looking at you or other people look at uh, other people. And I say, don't look at, at the man or woman. Look at God. Look at Jesus. You know? And don't get me wrong, you can be inspired by people. And like, man, I would like to be like Billy Graham someday or... You know, you can be inspired by these people, but the ultimate goal is to build that, that foundation in Christ. And th that's, that, that's what gets me motivated and excited. And, to, to, and you guys have, like I said last Sunday, is like you guys have the opportunity, whether your spectrum is small or large, uh, to pour into your, your, your grandchildren, your children, your neighbors, your friends, th these little seeds of the gospel and and then as they grow, you share the truth of the gospel and, and encourage people to, to build a foundation that's biblical. 
because a lot of our thoughts of, of Christianity sometimes are, are built on pop culture or, or what's popular in music and the theology is off. And, and, and then when things start to happen that, that are bad, people wonder, oh, does God really love me? And, and, and the, the key to me is that if we, we base our, our idea of God's love for us based on how things are going, man, it's going to be messed up. People are going to think that God doesn't love me, you know? Yeah. And, and that's messed up. We have to know with certainty. I know God loves me because the Bible tells me so. Not because of my circumstances or what's going on. It's because of God's word. And I, me too, I've been guilty of not not digging deep into God's word too and and to just to just to be thriving on God's word and feasting on it is is total vital to our to our to our life and to to our, our witness because once we dig deep into God's word it's it's going to come out like uh, like this like water you know the circumstances will come up and, and you'll have a verse for it, you know. It's just like reading it today. It's just like reading through those verses. Like, yep, that's today. Yep, okay, I saw that on CNN. Yep, mm -hmm. yeah, all these are coming through. This is uh, true, you know. It's just, man, God, God wants to use us, guys. God wants to use us, but we have to stand firm uh, with God. We have to uh, stand firm. We have to abide in Jesus. We have to uh, be with him and let him carry us through and walk us through that. Uh, I would like to close with a verse. It's uh, John 15, 5. I am, the van I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Man, I, when we... When we when we sit with Jesus, when we're with Jesus, uh, we're, we're going to have that eternal life. We're going to have that 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 life that people are going to want. Um, you know, um, and again, li listen to that. L let me read that again. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, he bears much fruit. From apart from me, you can do nothing. Apart from Jesus, we have nothing to give. We have, we have nothing that, that is anything of significance. But when we're in Christ Jesus, the smallest act, the smallest uh, gesture will change people's lives. And, and that, that's those small acts of love that you guys do, the, the smiles and, and the different things, you don't know what's happening. You're going to unlock people's hearts. Just be obedient, guys. Love Jesus. Have that, that foundation that's rooted in God's word and water it daily. Because when the tests come, when the storms come, uh, you'll be able to withstand. And, and just a thought comes to my mind. A lot of these people, uh, and I debated whether or not to share this, you know, but I think it's important because I know a lot of young people are going to listen to this later is that a lot of these people that also fall away too, a lot of it has to do with sexual sin as well. And, and I've noticed uh, some of the most famous people, there was, uh, yeah, I don't want to give glory to their name, but you follow and find that a lot of them end up going into sexual sin. They end up divorcing their wives. And it's like, okay, you, found, you say that you've found this new thing, uh, this freedom that God's not real, but it's very interesting in order for you to get rid of your wife or your husband, you have to divorce them because you want to live a certain lifestyle, you know? And so that root wasn't there. That relationship with Christ isn't there. And so building it, that's why it's so vital to know God's word and to build a, a, a relationship with Christ that is deeply rooted in God's word. Because when temptations come, when these things come, you know, um, you know you have to stand firm. And just even in my own life, I've uh, made decisions to stay away from certain things due to certain things just because I know the devil's there to uh, try to cut my head off. You know, just, he hates Christians. And, and to build that, that everlasting relationship, it's not about us. 
It's about being rooted in God and in God's word, and God will carry us there. I, I, I truly believe that, brothers and sisters. So I encourage you guys to, to remind others if they want to have a, a deep, lasting relationship with Jesus, is to have it rooted in God's word. I love you guys. In the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you for my brothers and sisters here. I thank you for those that will listen to this later, Father, that you would fill them with your spirit, that we remember uh, a deep-rooted relationship in you is the key to walking a long life with you for the rest of our lives, Father. We have hope that you will do great things in this nation, in our hearts, in our minds, Father, that you have set us free from the, the bondage of sin. Though we, will, we are sinners, Lord, you have covered us with the blood of Jesus. I love you, Lord. I know my brothers and sisters here love you. Father, pour out your grace and your love onto us today, and let us be a glorious light to others in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you guys. Thank you.